Yeah. Where's the fifth wheel? Can you find a fifth wheel? That's a fifth wheel. <laughs> that is a fifth wheel. Good job. Or the class A. Look over here. Look over here. That's class A. Yeah, it is a class A. There it is. When you raise your kids in an RV, you gotta start by teaching them the essential things. Trailer versus fifth wheel versus class A. Hey, Judge, you say thank you, Mommy? Hello. So what's up, fellow journeyers? Big question today. Why did we intentionally choose to raise our kids in an RV? Like when we started doing this, did you think, man, let's just uh, let's just raise our kids in an RV for what almost seven years now? <laughs> this I don't, is all, I don't this know all our seven years. I actually had nurse. an <laughs> expectation or like a time frame in mind. Uh -huh. I don't know. I think I was just trying to like survive one day at a time, man. <laughs> we have a few years of experience of raising kids in the road, but we thought Let's go knock on some doors and find out what other people think about raising their kids in an RV and why they choose it. Hi guys! Hi! Why do you raise your kids in an RV? I would say, let me just shut the door here real quick. That's the skateboarding dog. Like It was a real reality check. It's just like going to school, you know, and they come home, you do the homework thing, you know, you put them back to bed. And at the end of the day, you don't know your kids anymore. And so I think everything shifting online really helped us make this decision to make more memories with our kids and just make the most of it. Hello, Mom. Hello. How are you? <laughs> Good. How are What's you? What's going on? <laughs> Why do you raise your kids in an RV? When we first had kids, Corey and I prioritized immediately that we always wanted the four of us to be together as much as possible. And so we had that set up in our regular life and then the RV life just really fit that even better. And for us, we really feel like if you as parents are living in your purpose and what you feel like you're supposed to be doing, then open doors and opportunities are going to happen for your kids. And so whether we're living in an RV or whatever else happens later on in life, we just know that if we're doing what we feel we're supposed to do, then that's going to be the best for our kids. Hello! Hey. How's it going? I enjoy raising them in the RV because we are so much in close contact, which is probably a, a turnoff for some folks. We're like, I need more space. <laughs> But I enjoy being a part of their life, every part, you know, all part of the day. And you're just so involved with each other. For me, the reason why I want, we're kind of seeking this life is, I was always an adventurer. And as I've gotten older with more kids, it's, it's harder to just go hiking across the United States or something. So it's easier to take the kids on adventure. We really just wanted our kids to get out and see our country and experience it hands-on. Actually go and visit these places we're learning about and get to see everything. And it's also illegal for us to not take them. <laughs> and we felt like this is, they need to come with us. Let's go, buddy. Let's go, buddy. So I think one of the themes we've kind of seen with these families we're talking to is that it's a really big deal to like know your why of why you're doing this. Definitely knowing your why gets you through the hard times because there are hard times. I got a message on Instagram lately and someone said, you make this look so easy and it's not easy. And <laughs> I would never use the word easy because there definitely are its challenges, but at the same time, knowing that why and keeping that in your mind when when those challenges happen, then that's honestly like what keeps helping us push through those those challenging times. I mean, what do you think about us? Why do we raise kids in an RV? <laughs> we honestly just want as much time together as possible. Bond as a family too is a thing for me, but I love the freedom and flexibility because I think you see that theme too with these families, like. There, there's some sort of a pain point or frustration 
And a lot of those have to do with not having freedom of flexibility, not having a say in what's taught to your kids as far as faith, or not having a say in how your kids are taught in school, or where you get to go and what you want to do. You've got these dreams of things you want to do, and they're just not happening. <laughs> and also, you know, us struggling with infertility for so many years really just opened my eyes to how kids are such a, a gift, such a blessing, and we only get them for just this short amount of time and we really wanted to just soak it all in. We want to soak it in, JJ. No. <laughs> One, two. Where are you going? <laughs> Have I mentioned this is not always easy? Mm -hmm. Do you like living the RV lifestyle? Mm -hmm. I like that we can travel to different places that I've always wanted to see. What else do you like about RV life? I like to um, meet new friends and new people most. Uh, You've um, met some of your best friends on the road, haven't you? Uh huh. Yeah, I mean, if it wasn't for travel, I mean, Hensley wouldn't have met some of her best friends, like, ever, right? And you, you got to go to Disney with them this week. You guys excited for Disney? Yeah. Yeah, you excited, buddy? Excited, buddy. It's time to celebrate! And we did Universal this week. Here he goes! Whoa! <laughs> it was so amazing. Um, just watching the joy on their face. We got to go ride monster trucks this week. So if you haven't heard of Showcase of Citrus, we've heard it mentioned a lot and we've never actually been here. But what's really cool is they have a four by four safari and JJ is so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. You wanna ride it or drive it? I uh, drive it. Oh, I think we can ride it. I don't know if we can drive it. They've been known to actually ride on the backside. I didn't There it went! There was an alligator, did you see it? Alright, we're literally driving through a swamp in a monster truck. Never a dull moment. So when you're raising your kids on the road, you're also thinking, what about socialization? Are they gonna get interaction? We're on the playground less than five minutes and Hensley's already made new friends. They have been pushed out of their box. They have to be able to go and make new friends and meet new people and actually that is one of her best skills in life because she's always had to do that. She's always had to go up, introduce herself and say, hey, do you wanna play? Tampa RV show is coming up and that event is huge. Not just one, we have two meetups coming up. We will be doing a combined meetup with Finding Our Someday Friday the 21st at 3.30 to 5.30 in the South Domes. Follow us on our social media. We'll post a map for you can find us there. We're also doing a special meetup for our community on Team Journey and we will post those details on that community page and we look forward to seeing you guys there. We're so excited. These meetups are so fun for us. So hope you all can make it and we look forward to it. So we didn't stop at the question, how do you raise kids in an RV? We also asked these families, what's the hardest part of raising kids in an RV? I think when we boondock, they miss kids. Mm. But, and they, in the beginning when they were transitioning, they just miss their friends back home. But we hear it like less and less because they're meeting so many kids on the road. So. I love it. Is it harder to raise your teenagers <laughs> or to raise teenagers in an RV versus a house? And I don't think it is. Like in a house, you have certain things you have to deal with. And in an RV, you have certain things to deal with. I think it just depends on, again, is this what you guys really enjoy? Or, or not. And then I think parenting is just gonna fall in line with that. I think the hardest part of parenting is just 
teaching your kids <laughs> <and> parenting. <laughs> yeah, being I don't the think parents the hardest part to do. <laughs> Just scheduling and planning and getting all the little things together. You know, whether you're working from the road mm. or uh, travel days, getting things together and finding your people. Mm. That's a big thing for us because we have a strong community at, at our home. Yeah, and finding our people on the road. Um, there's so many amazing people, so that's that's been really cool. Okay, I would say the hardest part is just generally inconsistencies. We try our best to stay in a place for you know a week or two weeks, but sometimes that doesn't happen. So you might try to do homeschool and pick specific days and times, be up by this time, be done with your school by this time, and those things just go out the window some days. Yeah, I would say the kids would say their hardest part is leading friends. Yeah. So they make friends and they have so much fun, but it only lasts for a week or two, and then we go off in different directions. Which in our own sticks and bricks life when we were there, we would see our friends once a quarter. I mean, we <laughs> yeah, were, it was, their lives were so busy, our lives were so busy that we rarely saw our friends, even our neighbors, it was difficult to see them but once a month. And it was usually like waving when we took our trash out. So <laughs> yeah. I think that we still see friends more, but it's weird when you leave them and you literally are yeah. like, goodbye, it's a weird deal. And so we try to alleviate that by connecting with friends and keeping our schedules aligned. Let's just address the elephant in the room first. <laughs> Marissa I, um, tried to ride some rides. She should not have tried to ride Universal Studios yesterday. So It's my birthday this week, and I was trying to prove that I was still young at heart, and I can't move my neck today. <laughs> so, so what's the hardest part of raising kids in an RV for us? And let me preface with this. I didn't cry at our wedding. I did not cry at the birth of either child. Marissa wanted me to. But I cried. We bought our first RV and not tears of joy, tears of like, what have I done? It can be quite the experience. I think you have to brace yourself for that. We actually had an epiphany this week where we realized we don't really know what it's like raising kids in a house. We've only really raised our kids in an RV. Yeah, I think we talked to these families and they're like, oh, well, it's not that bad. You know, I mean, there's definitely stuff that's hard about living in an RV, but the kid part is pretty much like it was in the house. And so I think we just didn't realize how hard it was to raise kids. <laughs> that was um, the bigger question. Was the epiphany. Yeah, because we hit the road when Hensley was one. So essentially our whole parenting journey over the past seven years has been in an RV. Because you have so much freedom and flexibility, which is why we love this life mm -hmm. and why we chose this life. At the same time, that can be a lot of pressure, a lot of stress, a lot of inconsistency at times. If you sort of remember my pro with why we raised kids in an RV, it was for freedom and flexibility. But the flip side of that, that I think Marissa's alluding to here, is that mm -hmm. is also the hardest thing about it, is all the freedom and all the flexibility. And in an RV, it's a pro and a con, you've got to make your own boundaries. You always fill the space that you have. So your time is also a space that you have. But when you have a house and you have schedules and you're going to the same place, doing the same things, a lot of those spaces, those time blocks, places you go, things you're doing, those are already filled for you. In an RV, it's like you've got this blank <laughs> slate you can do whatever you want with. You, once you get your travel pace down, you get your homeschooling schedule down, you get all these things down, it's a glorious thing. If you don't define the space you have, it just keeps filling and filling and filling and filling with good stuff, stuff that seems like fun, but before long you're overweight, you're broke, your kids aren't educated at all. You know, like, <laughs> like you have to define this space when it comes to freedom and flexibility. And if you don't create these boundaries, we've seen lots of families, they get on the road for six months or 12 months. You get burned out. You get burned out mm -hmm. because you move too fast, you do too much, you don't make an intentional effort to help your kids connect with other kids. It's a lot to it. But on the flip side, Man, if you create these boundaries, it's so awesome. So do you think it's been worth it? Like raising kids in an RV or? Absolutely, it's been worth it. There isn't a moment that I look back on and think I wasn't present enough or I wasn't there enough. Honestly, having that feeling of no regrets has totally made it worth it. Much like Marissa, I feel like it's absolutely been worth it for us to raise our kids in an RV. Is it easy? No. <laughs> But apparently, it's also not easy to raise your kids in a house. Now, if you wanna see more of our videos about what it's like to raise kids in an RV, I've put together a playlist of four videos, two of which I would say might be my two favorite videos I've made since we've made hundreds of videos over the last 
six-ish years. Uh, one of those is being Marissa, which is a day in the life walkthrough. What is it really like to be a full-time RVing mom? And the other is a video we made of Judah, our second child when he was born, and we brought him home to our Airstream that we were living in. Definitely check those out. And if everyday life is keeping you from letting go and getting going when it comes to raising your kids, maybe it's time to change up everyday life. And until next time, we'll catch you guys later. Should I have stopped him?